again to read another scripture all about Jesus and the Holy Week. We're only going to focus on one egg today because I thought it was really important and I wanted to take time on it. So the one egg is this lucky yellow one. When I shake it, I don't really hear too much. So when I read the scripture, I want you to think, what could be inside this yellow egg? The scripture is John chapter 19, verse 16 through 22. So he then delivered him to them to be crucified. They took Jesus, therefore, and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called of the skull, which is in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they crucified him and with him two other men, one on either side and Jesus in between. And Pilate wrote an inscription also and put it on the cross. And it was written, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Therefore, this inscription many of the Jews read, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. That means everyone had the opportunity to read it. And so the chief priests of the Jews were saying to Pilate, do not write the king of the Jews, but that he said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. So let's see what's in the egg. Did you make a guess? Let's find out. It is nails in the shape of a cross. Well, let's talk more about why these nails are important. So why did Jesus have to die? We know that he died to save us from our sins. He saved us from our sins and we know that in scripture it says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But we've studied in the past all about Adam and Eve and we know Adam and Eve had the opportunity to make a choice. They had the choice to walk with God in the garden for all of eternity or eat from the tree. We know that they made an ungodly choice. They chose to eat from the forbidden fruit and that choice separated them from being in the garden with God forever. We know that Sin, the consequence of sin leads to death. And we know that we have sinned daily. We have to repent daily of our sins. And we know that God is perfect. He has never sinned. Jesus is never sinned. Now we know that these facts, but I want to give you an example, something to picture in your mind. So think of a canyon. On one side, we have us on a mountaintop. Now in between, there's a big valley and on the other side, there's God. Perfect, blameless. We know that we have sinned and fallen short. So if we're on one side of the valley, there is absolutely no way for us to get across this canyon in order to reach God. We cannot do it on our own. No matter what we try, we cannot reach and get across this canyon. So that's what sin is like. Sin has separated us from God, right? And what is sin? Sin can be stealing. Sin can be cheating. Sin can give you um, a way to not do what's right. Maybe disobeying God. Hitting your siblings. Being mean to your siblings. Maybe doing something you know that is not right. Well, we know that Jesus died for our sins, right? So we're saying that this canyon represents our sins and we cannot get to God when we are continuously sinning. But there's some hope for you. Jesus took away our sins, right? So when we repent and when we come clean of our sins, Christ takes that away. So Christ is like a bridge for us to get to God, to get to that holy place. Because when we're sinning, we repent and we say, Jesus, I need your help. I'm so sorry for all of the sins that I've committed, that you have died on the cross for us to get 
away from. So Jesus, when you say that you believe in him and you trust in him, he makes a path and a way to get to this beautiful spot in eternity where God has placed us. We just have to believe in the path that he chose for us. And we need to believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross so you can be set free and be in eternity with God. There's a scripture that I want to read to you. It is John chapter 5, verse 24. And it says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life and does not come into judgment, but it has passed out of death into life. He has passed out of death into life. We know that when we pass away one day, we will gain eternity. We will gain a lifetime with God, walking with him. Now, we know that Jesus had these nails put in his body, in his hands, and in his feet. Now, Christians, we should be sad that Jesus had to go through all of this strife, all of this pain, nails in his hands and in his feet. That was not an easy task to do. But we know that it was done with you in mind because Christ loves you. He has called you according to his purposes. And when we believe in Christ and we believe that Christ has died on the cross and has these painful nails put in his hands and feet, we feel sad, but there's a joy. We know that because of these nails, because of this, Jesus has given us eternal life, a way to live with God in eternity. So have joy today and know that Jesus Christ had you in mind. He has you in his heart. And you need to put him inside of your heart because he will lead you to life everlasting. So remember that Jesus Christ loves you and you should love him with your entire heart because he put these nails in his body so you could be set free. I love you so much. I can't wait to see what more God is going to teach us tomorrow.